Hey, what's happening, my network marketing friends? Todd Falcone here. Welcome to ToddFalcone.com. Perhaps you're watching this video on YouTube, wherever you might be watching it. If you're on YouTube, you might want to head over to ToddFalcone.com. There's probably a little bit more to the story there, but uh, nonetheless, happy to have you here. So recently, uh, well, let me, let me say two things. Number one, uh, about a year and a half ago, I authored this book, Fearless Networking. I actually wrote it as a training tool. I wasn't even intentionally trying to write a book, which is pretty funny. Uh, had a company called me up and asked me to do a training on overcoming objections and rapport building, which I started to put together. And then that expanded into inviting and overcoming objections and closing and follow up, which ultimately became this book, which is Fearless Networking, Create Better Connections, Invite With These, Obliterate Objections, Follow Up, and Close Like a Pro. So uh, whether you have the book or not, um, what I decided to do is uh, I'm going through the book on these videos. So what I'm going to do is actually, I don't know that I'm necessarily going to read it word for word, but what I'm going to do is take some of the points out of this book and go through chapter by chapter through different uh, video posts that I'm doing and uh, elaborate a little bit on some of the stuff. So uh, if you don't have the book, might be a good idea to get the book. You can go to toddfalcone.com. Uh, right on the front page, you can see there it says free book, or you can go to toddfalcone.com forward slash free book, and you can get it there if you don't have it. But uh, I'm going to go through the book. And what I found is that um, you know, this is a great training tool. I designed it as a training tool, not as a novel. It's 109 pages from cover to cover, so it's an easy read. And I'm going to just start kind of going through the book today with you. I'm going to go through chapter one, and I'm going to elaborate a little bit. So chapter one, I'm going to go into it, is titled The Foundation of Your Success. Um, and I'll just kind of read off. I'll re read part of it and then I'll elaborate. So my dad used to tell me, if you're going to do something, do it right the first time. Amazing how a lesson in doing chores has served me well in business. How He was referring to me doing a shoddy job of cleaning our bathroom and made me do it all over again. So the simple lesson is, if you're going to do something, do it right and do it the best you can no matter what it is. So I don't know. That's... Uh, uh, in fact, I mean, and here's the thing, your, your success in network marketing is dependent upon your, you building a rock solid, stable foundation of belief. It is a requirement, not an option if you're seeking significance in this business. A flimsy foundation isn't strong enough to support the weight of success, so it's imperative you build on a rock. If you're new to me, I'll tell you right now that I'm very blunt, and uh, I am. I don't beat around the bush in my training, soften things up or cream cheese anything. I don't have the time for it, and neither do you. So this whole book is... Uh, from cover to cover, I get to the point. So uh, in chapter one, I talk about a section called Let Your Beliefs Be Your Guide. And, uh, and it's, it's, in fact, I'll just kind of read it. Let your beliefs be, be your guide. Here's the deal. You cannot succeed until you think it is possible for you to succeed. Until you believe you can do it, you have very little chance of making it here. Op operating from a position of belief is at the very foundation of your success in network marketing. And the key thing is that we have to have our beliefs in order in four key areas. Number one, the profession of network marketing. How often have you talked to somebody and they're like, eh, no, you know, it's one of those things, or ah, I would never do network marketing, you know, that's, I would, that's for those, those people over there, or, you know, just the, the negativity sometimes that the profession gets. In fact, I've been on stages literally all over the world, and I can do and say, um, MLM has a blank attached to it. And without, without fail, literally in every single country I've done this on live on stage, somebody can come up with the word stigma. And I'm, I mean, literally every country, like I've spoken now in 28 or 29 countries. I have to go look at my map upstairs, but I think it's 20, 28 or 29, something like that. And it's crazy to me how people in multiple countries can come up with the same name, stigma. And I don't, to me, the word stigma does not, uh, I don't visualize really attractive things when I think about stigma. So um, of course, you know, having a belief in the profession, the business model, because when you wake up tomorrow morning, you represent network marketing before you represent your company, your products, your opportunities. So number one is the network marketing profession. Number two is the company that you represent. Number three is the products and services that your company brings into the marketplace. And number four is you. So you have to be building a, uh, a position of belief around all four of those areas in, in order for you to be in a convicted state. If you're not in a convicted belief state about what it is that you do, then you have very little chance of achieving success. Uh, people do not follow or do business with individuals that lack confidence or are unclear in the direction that they're heading. 
So think about that. If you're wavering, do you want to follow a waverer? So I would be asking yourself this question. Certainly grab the book, but I would certainly ask yourself this question. Where are my beliefs in, in those four areas? And what do I need to do in order to shift those beliefs? You know, a lot of times people have a pretty solid belief in their products or their service that they're bringing in the marketplace and they may love their company. But the thing that stops a lot of people, a lot of people, is they're lacking belief in the network marketing business model, <clears throat> the very thing that they're in. So how can you possibly be successful in something that you don't even really believe in yourself? So that to me is, is, and that's why I call it the foundation of your success. That's why it's literally chapter one in this book. And then I talk about six ways to build beliefs. Number one is immerse yourself in success. Well, I mean, if you're surrounding yourself with successful people and a, an environment that's uh, supportive and encouraging, then you're more likely to be working and developing on a mindset that's conducive to having a belief that I can do this, I think it's possible, anything is possible. So, you know, uh, I, I make kind of a joke out of it on stage sometimes, like my, my bad friend, I, don't, I, don't want, I won't say it on, on this video because who knows, he might actually watch it, but uh, my bad, bad friend, XYZ name, and how I can only spend about 45 minutes with that guy once every two years. Why? Because uh, he's just not, he's not, he's not, he's not feeding my greater life's purpose. So sometimes we have to separate ourselves from negativity. So uh, I talk about that in the book. Uh, number two is actively build your knowledge and put it to use. So uh, that phrase that we hear all the time, knowledge is power. I don't really believe that knowledge is power. To me, knowledge is, it's nice. Um, it's powerless until you put it to use. But for you to shift your beliefs and your, your conviction around what it is that we do, the more knowledgeable that you are, the more that you apply that knowledge into the business, the better you're going to get. And when you get better, your attitude towards what you do changes dramatically. So that's point number two. Number three is create and collect stories. So in terms of, again, working on your beliefs. So if, if, I, if I continue to hear stories from other people that have had successes and achievements in, in my line of work, in my occupation, in my company, it, with my products or services, and I'm constantly filling that well, and I'm, and I'm, I'm collecting more stories, and I'm, I'm feeding my body with, I'm literally eating these stories, essentially, it's going to change my mindset. And the other part of it is, is helping to create a story. If you want to create uh, a greater level of success and a greater, a higher degree of belief in what it is that you do, there's no, there's nothing better than the proof is in the pudding. Like you actually going out and doing something and creating some level of success yourself. So it's like, it be, let me tell you something. When you're making 10 grand a month, it's a whole lot easier to talk about network marketing than when you're making $0 a month, pure and simple. So the faster that you can start creating your own success story and other success stories, whether it's on your products, or your business, the faster you're going to move through uh, this, this development of belief and put you in that totally convicted space. Number three, or excuse me, number four is take action daily. Your consistent daily actions and efforts in building your business directly contribute to growing your personal confidence. You can't get good at something you don't do. Daily action in spite of not knowing everything helps you to learn, earn, and grow in your beliefs. Remember this, you don't need to know everything in order to get started. A lot of your learning will take place because of the actions that you take and your beliefs will grow as a result of those actions. So again, remember this, if you're just sitting on the sidelines watching, you can't get good at something that you're never doing. Number five is practice. I talk about this all the time and I don't care that I sound like a broken record, like a broken, like a broke, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a broken record, right? So the, the, because it's out of observation, out of massive observation that very few people are practicing. And I say this in the book, this is something I cannot say enough about professionals are professionals because they practice. If you want to get good at this business and feel confident doing it, then you need to spend regular time in practice, taking time to practice your approaches, your invites, and your presentations. Anything that you do in this business to make money should be practiced ahead of time. Build practice into your regular routine, and you'll find yourself quickly improving your skills and your confidence at the same time. And number six is regularly attend events. The more plugged in you are, the better off you'll be. Events serve many purposes, including helping you to not only learn, but to, to be in an environment that fosters belief. The more events you attend, the more likely you're going to grow both your business and your beliefs. Now, look, here's the thing. Uh, I know that the very first event that I attended uh, in San Diego, California, almost 30 years ago, is what began to cement me into network marketing. 
I almost didn't attend that event because, and I mean, it was like 1989. It was 300 bucks to attend this event 30 years ago. And I didn't have the money. I was a 22 year old kid, but I made it. And I'm thankful that I did because I began to establish a greater degree of belief in the business model and that I might be able to do it and what we were doing as a whole by attending those events. So that, I mean, if you're not attending events, but you think you're in the game, then you're really not in the game. So there's a little bit more to chapter number one, but that's chapter number one. Understanding why people buy is chapter two. I'll be getting to that soon, but chapter one is the foundation of your success. So we've got to be building this rock solid foundation in order for us to achieve success. And uh, again, this is all coming out of the book, Fearless Networking. Uh, Next time I see you and we're doing the book blog post anyhow, I will be talking about chapter two, understanding why people buy. So we'll see you on the next one. 